Hello again and welcome to Delmi Training Institute's DTIL 101 Introduction to Network Cabling. We are on lab number four. So lab number four is terminating or making your own patch cable using RJ45 non-pass-through jacks. And this lab is going to be um, very similar to uh, exactly what we did in lab number three. The only difference here is the connectors that we're going to be using are slightly different. These are non-pass through, so you cannot cheat. You cannot have all the cables go through before you terminate. So the objective of this lab is to build your own category 5E6 or 6A cable um, using an unshielded twisted pair cable. And once that is done, you test for continuity. Now the material to use, uh, it could be a category 5E6, any twisted cable that you so deem to use for the patch cable you want to create. You need some RJ45 jacks and here we need the non-pass through jacks. Again, I did say when you hold them up and you lock at the top, you shouldn't be able to see any hole in there and that designates that these are non-pass through jacks. You're going to need a twisted pair stripping tool or your electrician's or lineman scissors. So these are going to be your stripping tools that you have here. You're also going to need your crimp tool RJ45 here. Now remember that these crimp tools have the blades on as we did mention in lab number three. But these can do both pass-throughs and non-pass-through. However, if you get one of the crimp tools that is not rated for pass-throughs, then which means that it would not cut. So it's not, um, it's not applicable in situations like that. But however, for this lab, we are using the pass-through um, crimp tool that has the blade to do the non-pass through. Even though we don't have to cut, we can still crimp accordingly. And then finally, we need a piece of cable tester. Here we're going to use the very basic wire map to let us know that it's gone. So to start off, I have to strip about one to two inches of the jacket from the cable and that's going to be the very first thing you want to do that's going to be my step one so let me just move everything out of the way and this way we can focus on the task ahead i'm going to use this put my cable through that's about an inch to two just going to spin this around take that off i can see an incision on the cable at this point and once that happens i'm just going to bend it like that and break it off from it once that happens you want to inspect to make sure that your blade did not go all the way too deep to create damage on the cable so i have inspected and i think there is nothing on it now this cable also has this center divider you can either cut it off or pull it down 90 degree and break it off again we are going to do the 568a wiring scheme in other labs we're going to be doing the 568b so First thing is I'm going to unravel all the cables, the pairs, I'm going to unravel them. And because we're going to do the 568A, it starts off with the green pair. So I'm going to unravel that and I'm going to straighten them as I do. Again, we can do that using your lineman scissors or you could even use any other tool, even as, such as this. You could do the next one, which is your white, your orange pair also unravel that and all you could do was just take it like that find a nice smooth edge like that put it on put your thumb on it like that and just pull it through it's, it works as well so it doesn't only have to be a lineman scissors if you do this you avoid so much pain on your thumb but i've been doing this for a long time so it's easier on my my thumb and then I'm gonna do the last one which is the brown pair I'm gonna unravel it and straighten everything out well this is where precision comes in and you have to be very careful with this because unlike the pass through that all the cables come and you can cross check again before you crimp this one doesn't give you that op option so you have to make sure that once you are arranging your cables, you do arrange them properly. 
So I'm going to start with my white green. So white green is here. Now, let me talk about the trick of the trade. You know, I see most people make this mistake when they are putting them together, they like to hold this end of the cable. If you do hold this end of the cable, as soon as you put it together, you take your finger, naturally, it's going to go back to its default place where it's been for a long time. So my trick is to keep my finger, my index finger and my thumb together, and that way I'm able to sandwich the cable in like that. By doing this, the cables do not switch positions, and as I continue to build them, I just keep sliding them in. So let's take a look. So I have my white green and my solid green. Next is going to be my white orange. So I have my white orange here, but notice if I have to go here, I'm going to go over the solid orange. So it's better for me to go underneath it, right? So I went underneath it and I was able to put my solid, my white orange next to it. Once I put it next to it, I straighten them all up. Sometimes you just have to weave it a little bit and you can get it straight. After that, it's my solid blue pair. I bring that one next to it and my white blue pair follows. Do the same thing, just weave it through. And then my solid orange would come in and then my white brown and solid brown. Those are the last two that I'm supposed to put together. So this is it. This is what you have to do to attain a very successful termination. Now that I've done this, the excess that I did strip off, it allows me to hold the cable and dress it up nicely. Most of the times you see students try and just cut and strip this much. By keeping your finger here is difficult. You don't have nothing to grip on to try and straighten the pairs. So always make sure that you're generous on the cable and you strip as much as you can. This is the goal. This is where you want it to be, like this. You want your cables to all be straightened out like that before you proceed to the next step. Okay, so once I have done this, Next thing I'm gonna do is, this is too long, so I'm just gonna cut off this excess here so that I can start working with. I verify my cables again, white green, solid green, white orange, solid blue, white blue, uh, solid orange, white brown, and solid brown. Now, this is my non-pass-through jack, and I'm just gonna demonstrate. If I take this and I start to feed it, it does not come out from here like the first one that I did. And at this point, when I terminate it, this is what's going to happen. I still have exposed um, pairs here. And this is what creates what we call crosstalk because the cables are exposed and they've all been straightened up. The, the, the ideal termination would be to have the blue jacket all the way in to the jack so how do we get that done this is what we do you want to be able to take this and put it next to it like that because this is where you want the jacket to be the jacket has to go past this crimp here that is what is going to hold the jacket in place so you want to be able to go past that to enable you have a successful termination so I'm going to put this next to it like that, right? And with this next to it, that's how much I'm going to cut. But most of the times when you do this, do not just cut exact. Because sometimes when you start to push the cable in, remember the piece of the cable will retract into the jacket. So if you cut the exact measurement that you want, by the time you finish pushing it all the way in, most of the cable have gone in and you're not able to make it to the copper or the, the, the golden pins up here. And as a result, your cable is gonna fail. So I'm gonna take this, put this next to it like that, and I would trim a little bit more than that, right? Ideally, I was supposed to trim here, but I'm gonna trim with probably another millimeter or so above it. And this is where I start to do some measurements. So I 
check my wiring again take this and slide it in but you noticed one thing that even though the jacket is in it did not go all the way as much as I did want it to go right so at this point I can just trim off another millimeter from it or you could wiggle that if you have enough room you could wiggle it and let it go past but I think that by just trimming a little bit of this not too much just a little bit I can reseat this remember I did make mention of the fact that when you are terminating always make sure that your pins are facing up and your pin one is going to be to your left so when I hold the cables like that my pin one is my white green and my pin number eight is the solid brown so by taking that and aligning them like this I can have the cable go in and you see how my cables are all aligned even though I have left it they not um, crisscrossing it was just because of the way I did arrange them from the start well I'm going to hold this end and I'm going to feed the cable in slightly and gently until everything goes in right and then I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit once I've done that I want to look at the top here and by looking at the top you could see all the copper being exposed here right that's just where it's going to be and I have enough of the jacket go past the retaining clip and at this point I have one more thing to do before I crimp it there's the possibility that I can see the color codes from within this clear jacket so I'm going to confirm my colors again so I have the white green solid green white orange solid blue white blue solid orange white brown solid brown I am very confident at this point that my cables did not crisscross whilst I was sliding it in and at this point I can crimp it so I'm going to also take my crimp tool you can feed that in as you can see here and then I'm going to crimp it just one shot press this down and all that is going to do is it's going to force that in here is going to force these golden pins to make contact with the cable the solid copper core within the the individual pairs and that's going to make a good connection with that and once that is done I take this out there are a few things to note you can now see very well that there's been a good crimp on the cable jacket here that is the defining moment of your termination because once you have it like this when someone starts to yank on the cable or twist and turn the cable is securely held down by that and your cables are always going to be intact so this is just how you terminate using the non pass through and I'm just going to do the other end to allow me to test with my tester to make sure that my cables have been done right so I'm going to go a little bit fast through this part of the video and you can follow along well just to make sure that you have been able to achieve exactly what I've achieved if you haven't and you have crisscrossing on your wires go back and rearrange them but like I said the key to a successful termination is to make sure that your wires are all straightened out properly all the kinks are taken out and you arrange them nicely next to each other so I'm going to take my next um, non pass through again like I did say and measure it with time because I've been doing this for some time I know when I hold the cable like this this is the right length that I have to cut off but it takes practice so I'm going to put this next to it here and I know that's where I'm going to cut so I'm going to cut these cables off and that's just what's going to be left I'm going to take that here see how it still lays on my finger and I'm just going to take that verify my cables again white green green white orange blue white blue orange white brown brown sometimes you'd make a mistake when you make a mistake that's fine 
just go back and re-strip and do it all over again. So here, I'm just going to put it. You can see it's not gone in fully at this point. So I'm just going to wiggle it and make my way all the way through. And at that point, I can see that all my cables have gone all the way to the end. My jacket has gone all the way in. When I look on top here, I can see all the copper showing up here. And then it's time for me to put a crimp on. This time I'm going to use this crimp. Like I said, this crimp tool, going to use the eight position point, put that in here and give it a nice crimp. And that is it. And when you look at this, it's also been done nicely. When I put them together, you can see all the wires have gone in. My jackets are being crimped on and that is it. So at this point, I'm going to test to make sure that my cables have been done right and I have a straight through connectivity. So I'm going to use my tester here to test for continuity. I'm going to turn it on here and I'm going to look at these cables and go through. So let's take a look. So it's, as you see, it all lines up one for one, two for two, etc., all the way to eight. And that means that my cable, the wire map is good. Well, folks, so this brings us to the end of lab number four, making your own patch cable using a non-pass-through jack. I hope you did find this video informative. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on our channel. And I will see you on the next one.